So I'm Klaus Meinke. I'm the head of AI at Hadrian Security. And the reason that I started working in machine learning and artificial intelligence is to make machines be able to do things that it seems like only humans should be able to do, that should require human intuition. So whether that's recognizing a picture of an animal, or discovering a planet orbiting around another star, or hacking another machine. And that's exactly the reason that I'm working at Hadrian Security. And so today I want to show you a little bit of the technology that we're building to bridge the gap between external tests and human-level hackers. To start off, I want to show a little bit about how these typical tests work, how these programs behave. The behavior of these programs is based on decision trees, decision trees that were programmed by engineers. So for example, let's take an example where I need to discover a password field. An engineer might program that to look for the word password. And now you might realize that that will only work some of the times. What if this web application is in another language? In that case, perhaps we can also program in the word password in other languages. However, we're going to have more and more edge cases that will accumulate over time. And as you can tell pretty quickly, since this is only one of 10,000 cases, we're very quickly going to break down when it comes to those edge cases. So these typical tests are very, very useful for a lot of cases, specifically when it comes to standard environments. You know, we can have a test that runs against the standard environment and we can scale it easily to millions. However, it doesn't work very well for custom web applications. In particular, when they have these weird edge cases and when they behave in unexpected ways. On the other hand, I want to talk a little bit about how hackers think. And this is what we've seen by working together with many hackers. The first thing a hacker does is he looks for all of the things from an organization on the internet. They're trying to find everything that's external facing. They then run a suite of different tools that they might have developed themselves or they grabbed from the open source community. They're inspecting the outputs of those tools and they're building context. They're building knowledge about this organization. And then finally, they're running they're trying to exploit the system and find bugs, and that they'll do that thousands of times before likely hitting on a bug. And this is remarkably similar to how AI agents work. The way that an agent works, it has sensors. It senses an environment. In our case, that will be perhaps a terminal. Perhaps it'll be uh, network logs. Perhaps it'll be a browser. The same types of tools that a hacker would use. And so this is what the LLM is seeing. We then use the React framework, the reasoning and action framework, so that the LLM actually reasons about what needs to be done in order to reach the desired state. In this case, finding a bug. And then it'll take actions that change the environment, that influence the environment. For example, by running tools. And so the, the agent will output, this is what I should do. It will then run a number of tools. Those tools will influence the environment. For example, I write a terminal command, and then I see an output. And then I once again sense my environment. I see what, what's happening in the terminal. And then based on that, I can then reason again what's the next step I should take. And that's the general framework. This reasoning action framework, React framework, is the general framework used for AI agents. And this is much more similar to that human level behavior, that more intuitive way of finding vulnerabilities. And so I want to generalize this a little bit, stepping back and looking at Hadrian's architecture as a whole. We break it up into three distinct phases. One is sensing. So this is, again, all about finding all the different things on the internet from, the, from an organization, then making a plan, figuring out what those things are, and then finally attacking, actually running many different types of exploits to try to find an exploit based on what we saw in the plan phase. So I want to go deeper into those three columns, sense, plan, attack. And first, I want to talk about one of the things that we do for sensing, which is efficient subdomain discovery. So specifically for this, we've actually developed our own GPT model. Um, you can see here the scale 
of it, it's much, much smaller than ChatGPT. Actually, three orders of magnitude are 1,000 times smaller. And that's important for us because we're running at large scales, running of millions of scans every single day. Because it's trained for such a specific purpose, however, we see that we actually get 12% more subdomains discovered at Hadrian using SubWiz compared to a fine-tuned version of ChatGPT, which gets 8% more. And in fact, it's so lightweight to run that actually can easily be run on consumer hardware. And for that reason, we also open sourced it for bug bounty hunters and ethical hackers to use. And we released the weights on Hugging Face as well as a tool on GitHub that hackers can actually use to make use of this uh, LLM that we trained. Another step is asset attribution. How do I tell if a web page on the internet belongs to a specific organization? And a number of things that our AI is looking at are logos that might be there. For example, the Hadrian logo. This image is probably very uh, specific to this organization, right? Also looking at keywords. In Hadrian's case, the word pen testing would be a good reason to believe that this web page could belong to Hadrian as an organization. But also looking deeper and analyzing the actual code that's being used to run this web application. Then in the next step of planning, we're building a lot of context about what these web applications are that we found on the internet. Some of the things that we do are flag old codes. So we have our own model that can predict the age of a web page with less than 1.2 years. Then we also can classify these web pages. What exactly is happening on this web page? Is it a registration, a login, perhaps a shopping cart? And the way that we do this is through something that's called context engineering, which is very important for our AI team. The gist of it is really compressing lots of data. When you access a web page in your browser, you're getting megabytes of data, but not all of that is relevant for hacking. So we need to extract the most interesting parts, perhaps the title of the page, perhaps a text box. What are those really interesting things that I want to feed into my LLM? And that context engineering is such an important part of building efficient and useful agents. And the next part is crafting attacks. So at Hadrian, we actually run our own fine-tuned LLMs. So we fine-tune these with more than 100,000 hacking challenges. Where do we take these challenges from? Some examples here are uh, these books that you'll find that hackers might use to learn how to hack or as a resource while they're hacking. And by actually distilling knowledge out of these books and using them to fine-tune LLMs, we actually see on our internal benchmarks more than 2x performance. So these LLMs. We're actually unlocking so much nascent knowledge inside of them about how to hack, as well as putting new knowledge and distilling knowledge into them. And then another important part is building these tools. So we have a lot of tools out there that are meant for humans to use to hack. And we work together with our hackers to build those same tools, but in a way that LLMs can use them. So whether that's using a browser and clicking around and filling uh, text fields, or perhaps it's brute forcing, or perhaps it's observing network logs. All of those are the types of tools that we develop for our LLMs to be able to use. And so to really demonstrate this movement from sensing to planning to attacking, I actually want to walk through two flows. So the first flow, we actually see our subdomain agent, which, is, which finds new subdomains, and it queries uh, our data layer for new domains that were found using scope radar in the process that I discussed before. And the subdomain agent actually runs both passive domain discovery as well as using our internal model subwiz. And it discovers an unknown subdomain. And you can see through the reasoning action framework, you can actually see that it has a very interesting thought. The thought is that this subdomain, files-1.demoapp.test, is not listed in passive data sources and more likely to contain a vulnerability. And why do we know that? Because our LLMs have learned that from looking at lots of web applications. And this specific flow that I'm walking through is modeled very closely after real vulnerability that we found in a customer. And now we've replicated that in our development environment in order to test our LLMs. And so the LLM sees this new subdomain that looks interesting and it passes it to the next stage to actually plan and get more context about this web application. 
this classification agent makes a request to the HTTP service on this domain. It recognizes an open directory. And that's particularly handy for us because we've recently developed agents that are specifically, we're developing the tools and the prompts and the context engineering specifically around exploring these open directories. And so this, uh, this asset, because it's an open directory, is actually handed off to our open directory agent. The first tool it runs is specific for this, uh, type of, um, for this type of application. So it runs a crawling tool, and then it selects which files to parse. Why is this important? Because now we're bringing in the element of intuition, that the way that a human hacker would look at an open directory with 10,000 files in it and wouldn't open each one, we're actually figuring out what are the important things that we need to parse. In this, in this case, it's specifically cho chosen these to parse. And then an LLM actually looks through these files and finds two passwords. And we could report that as a potential vulnerability, but really verifying that this is a possible exploit. It queries our data layer to see other domains where it might be able to try these. It tries the first credentials, which fail, and then it tries the second credentials and actually succeeds. And then it reports an exposure. And I think what this really shows is starting to bring in that human level intuition. And what we see is that all these edge cases that we talked about um, become very easy with an LLM. So I'll give another example. Recently, we found a passport that was in an open directory. It was a PDF. When you opened that PDF, you, you saw a passport, which was obviously a leak of PII. And that's the type of edge case that an engineer probably would have never programmed into their script. However, when you're feeding this data into an LLM, an LLM quickly recognizes that it has the necessary knowledge to know what a passport is, is this inappropriate to be leaked online, and then can report that risk. So you really see this human level intuition coming to play. So now to walk through our, a second example where we can also go through these phases. We again see an LLM query the data layer for Apex domains and then query to get more context about this domain, specifically the DNS, what technologies have been fingerprinted, and also the known vul vulnerabilities on those technologies. In this specific case, we found ROM-M, which is a hosted ROM manager. And there's known to be an existing CVE on this technology. So it's actually handed off to a specific agent. And this CVE agent pulls in the CVEs related to this fingerprinted technology. So it's actually going to GitHub and pulling in uh, the CVEs and then pulling the patches from GitHub. So when you pull in the CVE, you see where the patch is. And then, however, there's no exploit available yet for that specific CVE. So I pull in the patch from GitHub. And then by pulling in the patch from GitHub, the agent is able to actually write an exploit that can exploit this vulnerability. So this is something where online we cannot find yet an exploit, but an LLM is actually able to write it. So the next agent then analyzes the script that's been written. It analyzes it for arguments, which it gathers from the context. It then executes the code in an isolated environment. And we're actually able to find an exploit and write a risk report, which includes the patch analysis that was described before. So this was a script that we didn't have internally running at Hadrian. However, an agent was able to actually write this, uh, this exploit. I hope that's given you some idea of some of the cool technology that we've been building at Hadrian. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to scan this QR code for my LinkedIn, and you can uh, reach out to me. Or I'll also be around during the next two days, and you can find me at booth 3660. Thank you.